so we uh we we could give more people the opportunity to be part of that presentation so for now i guess we'll just move on to um to discuss communications plan today so i'm going to share my screen um and comments so earlier on we 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 were trying to know where we were all joining from um we see someone one person joining from lagos um two people from garki and then um of course we have eli from vancouver so um i'll go back just one more slide where my slide is going to start from and um so um sorry i think i think we have one more poll we want to know what devices you are using if you click that link that we shared with you you'll be able to tell us um what device you're using and we're asking for this so we know what is um prominent with our audience uh, should we be considering some um some future presentation on how this could be beneficial to you so we thought to collect this data um so if, i know we're not much on the call but it would be nice to just have that so if you follow that link sli.do um, you should see on your page it tells you uh, it I mean asks that question on your device I'm using two devices so I'm voting in two devices there actually it's Mac PC not Windows PC sorry Windows <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm going to proceed. I think we've taken all the counts. I'm just one or two more people, but um, okay. So please, as we proceed, I would like to request that um, we mute our microphones so that uh, we can minimize the distractions from the noise. Um, so I had to mute Onyocha, I'm so sorry about that, but uh, there was some noise coming from you. So I'll just go back um, one slide more. And um, so this is the scope of what we're talking about. Uh, we're, we're discussing communications um, plan today. And my name is Jeremiah once again. I am a development communications um, professional. I don't like to use the word expert so i don't deprive myself the opportunity to learn from others so i currently i am in charge of communications and advocacy for a world bank funded project in i mean in nigeria uh, domiciled at the nigeria center for disease control and prior to that i led uh, corporate communications at the the ncdc so i've um, I've had previous experiences before those two um, stints, and um, I mean, I've 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 experienced a bit, quite a bit of um, planning for communication, and I've always seen it as something that um, many organizations, especially small organizations, both nonprofits, social enterprises, and um, small businesses struggle with um, and some of the reasons where, why i see that happening is because um first the main uh, many many of the organizations i have interacted with and consulted with or consulted for rather um many of them don't see the need for it and they just go into their events you know wing it um plan without that's proper planning. It's just about um, something is happening, and that's it. And most of the most most people that I've seen limit communications planning to just um, events and all that. Um, quite a few number of organizations tie it into the core of their or their of their organization and the goals they are set up to achieve. So we're going to be looking at 
um, what communications is, what what the communications plan is and why we need it, an overview of areas where we can apply it, um, irrespective of um, the, the the size of the organization you're running, and few tips on how you can get started. You know, using communications plan for your advantage. I mean, for your organization. So. Um, so simply it's whatever activities, um, whatever um, initiatives, whatever ideas you're exploring towards a specific um, outcome for either an event or for your organization or for a particular campaign, whatever it is that um, you're, you're putting together as um, steps or activities or initiatives, to ensure that a particular outcome is achieved with an audience um, boils down to communications. You know, it aligns your activities. To, it, it ensures that whatever you're doing um, directly impacts the final goal that you're looking towards for your organization or for a particular case that you might need that plan for. That's communication planning. Um, I wrote here, I said it prioritizes your needs. It, it helps you identify your audiences. It helps you um, take a deep dive into what your messages um, should be. Your message or your messages should be how should you deliver these messages and how would you know if this message um, if this message that you've passed across to your audience has been received by the audience and of course you don't send a message just to um, just to, just for the sake of it, um, one of my former bosses always has this mantra, your communication should be to educate, entertain, and inform. You know, it informs people, it educates them, and it also entertains them. I mean, that's like the sum of it. So there is a call to action that follows every message. The action you see people taking, is that what you wanted them to see when you pass that message? You know, so that's what communication plans helps you to um, take a look at and ensure that your effort is successful. So timely and proactive delivery of activities are all ensured by, um, are all ensured by your communications plan. So please, I'll, I'll still urge us to keep our microphone on mute. Um, so basically what your communication plan does for you is it's all about your message. You have an idea. It is put together um, in, into a message and communicated through a series of um, ideas, initiative activities towards an end goal to see, uh, to see your, your, your target audience act on that message. So um, possible use cases are listed here. We have either to achieve business or organizational goals. Um, it could be for campaigns. You are having a campaign to launch a product or to advertise a product, or uh, it could be health campaigns. I mean, um, it also event management. During event planning, there is communication. You must have a plan for that. During, if, I mean, publicizing your event, you must have a plan for that branding your events, the coverage of the events, or you could say documentation for that event. I mean, the, the event venue and all that, all this needs to be planned for. Internal communications for organizations. How do you ensure that um, every member of staff in your organization, big or small, um, understands your vision and they agree with that vision and then align with it and support you to achieve, I mean, to realize that vision. Public relations is another aspect of communications planning. It's it's actually broad based, you know. Uh, media relation also um, how you interact with the media, how you relate with them. Social media management, project management, communication. You are on a project. How do you communicate with your stakeholders, which could be the funders or uh, the people who gave you that job? It could be as simple as building a website for an organization uh, or for for a client you want to let the client know what to expect when to expect it and when to start uh, measuring um, the efforts 
you and the client are committing into that particular job, you know. So that's all communications planning. There is a way to do it. Um, Sometimes uh, your communication must align with uh, your your overarching goal. What is it that your organization uh, is set to do? Your nonprofit. What are you set to achieve? You know. So your communications plan has to speak directly to that. At the end of your communication efforts, um, at the end of all the efforts you commit into doing communication, does it, um, does it enhance the achievement of your organizational goal or, or for a particular project that you set out to do or an initiative that you set out to, um, to actualize? If the communication plan doesn't speak directly to that, in fact, in the business, in the in the in the, in the for-profit world, um, the private sector, communication is tied to the return on investments. So, if a company is launching, say, a new phone and they produce one one million pieces of do, of those phones of that phone, and um, they launch a communication plan. The success of that communication plan is going to be tied to how much of those phones is sold to the target audience that the phone was meant for at the end of the at the end of a period. So it's the same for nonprofits. Your communications plan has to speak directly to why your organization, um, what the mission or the vision of your organization is, or what you set out to achieve with a project. So consistent and effective communication um, with an audience provides momentum to achieve um, your set pro your programs or your set goals. So um, communication is very, very important. No matter how passionate you are um, about whatever you want to do, um, it doesn't replace your lack of planning. Remember, it's not just about you, it's about everyone in the organization on one part, and then it's also about the audience you're trying to reach. So don't wing it if you must do it. So um, communications plan can be very comprehensive and quite elaborate. Uh, so this overview that I gave here is um, looking at it, um, I mean, looking at a very wide scope of what a communications plan could be. You start with the situation analysis, lots of research, lots of questions to ask, um, uh, both external, um, I mean, viewing externally from the organization or internally into the organization. I mean, it, there's, there's just so much that goes into uh, the situation analysis to understand the context, both the broad-based context and um, the organizational context itself. Then there's more research that goes into who your target audience is. I mean, there's a lot of science around all this. It's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of efforts that goes into that, and it this also commands a lot of resources down from the, I mean up from the social I mean, situation analysis down to the monitoring and evaluation plenty of resources um, at every point in time so that's where the problem now is aside the fact that this becomes a very complex um, a very complex uh, 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 science to 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 do there's also the resources you need to commit into this so it's a lot of money it's a lot of time. It's a lot of um, um, uh, intellectual resource that goes into achieving a very comprehensive communication plan. I know of big organizations that have literally been grounded because uh, or their, their movement has been slowed down because they lack a communication plan. And it's not because they can't just go ahead to do the communication. It's because without research, it's almost impossible for them to achieve what they are set out to do they cannot so but then that's where the advantage is for small non-profit it doesn't have to get this complex for you to start guiding your activities with uh, with a communications plan and that's the essence of the presentation today keeping it simple the post approach um the post approach simply just means people objectives strategy and tactics 
I mean, this is the bare minimum that you can get for um, planning communications. This this post approach is not just um, is is not peculiar only to communication. It's a it's a I mean, it's a cross sectoral, cross industry um, technique that is applied both in engineering, um, the sciences, social sciences, and the acronym remains the same, but sometimes the meaning, especially at the end, the tactics, sometimes it changes to tools. Some, some, some people, it changes to technology. But for us, this is where we keep it, public, people, objective, strategy, and the tactics. So um, the advantage of this is it forces you to focus on your minimum viable products, your, your, your barest minimum the base for you, where can you get started? Because um, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's a given that you have to plan if you don't want to fail. You know, it's, it's said you have to plan if you don't want to fail because lack of that means that you're, uh, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So um, this, is, this is something that can get you started both for your own business as a, as a person um, or for a nonprofit that is just starting out uh, it gives you this overview of everything that um, your organization is, I mean, your communications plan is all about. What, at, at a glance, um, you just see what your communications is all about, either for your organization or for an event. I mean, all those use cases that I listed. So, the post, the, 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 like I said, the post approach gives you an at a glance overview of what your communications plan is. I mean, at the tip of your finger, you just know who are my people. After all your research and all that, everything fits into posts. So you think, who are my people? Who am I trying to reach? Um, what are my objectives with these people? Or it could be the other way. Some people start with the objective. Oh, I want to achieve this. Oh, who do you want to achieve it with? I want to achieve it with this, per with this particular group of people. Oh, nice. So what's the strategy? Um, this is how we're going to reach them. Uh, we use this, 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 this. So all your strategies, what are the tactics? What are the tools? What are, what are the technologies you can use to uh, bring these strategies to life? So a very quick tool for developing plans, not requiring something comprehensive, gets you started on developing a more comprehensive communication plan for your organization. Um, so we'll start with the people. That's the target audience. Who are you trying to reach? I put a second question there saying specifically who are you trying to reach so this question that i put here is something that i found to really um help me um know who exactly at least as close as possible who my target audience is it says what individual or individuals or groups have the power to create the change you want to see in your program or your goal so I give you a quick exa a, a quick example. You say you you are trying to reach out to children of um, school age who do not have the opportunity to be in school. Um, so the question is, what individuals or groups have the power to help you get these children to school? Is it the children themselves that have the power to create um, the required um, situation, opportunity, or opportunity to ensure that the student get to school? Is it the parents? Or perhaps um, it could be a religious, um, a religious hindrance, as we've seen in some part of Nigeria. Or it could be traditional, as we've seen across the country and in some West Af uh, African countries too. So that's a question to ask that who who has that power to create the change that you want to see? That person becomes your target audience. But then it's not a clean line sometimes. It, it, there, are, there are blurry boundaries. Um, so that's why we have the primary, the secondary, and sometimes even the tertiary um, audience. The primary audience is the most important group to reach. The people with the direct power to cause the change that you want to see then those people sometimes you do not have a direct access to them um so that way I mean, that's when you begin to look at the secondary audience 
who has an influence on this primary audience to um, to get them to uh, I mean achieve the change that you're looking to achieve so it's very important you know who your primary audience is and who your secondary audience is say for example still the, the example of the children that are out of school in rural areas so you reach out to the parents um, and the parents are actually the ones that will give their children permission to go to school but if there is no school to attend their permission won't even make any difference and then you step up and you say maybe the the chief and the elders of that community the gatekeepers and the gatekeepers are also willing to i mean allow these children go to school but they don't have the wherewithal no resources and all that so your your audience changes at that point because these people even though they are directly impacted by the change that you're trying to bring they don't have the power to um they don't have the power to bring that change that you want to see so you begin to look elsewhere maybe we should be targeting um, the legislators legislators in charge of that region or maybe we'll begin to target funders who are interested in getting children into school so those questions just helps you get to who your primary and your secondary audience um, is so taking it further I, I mean we're supposed to keep it simple with this presentation but just just to pick your curiosity you could go further into audience analysis looking at who your audience is what personifies your audience um, uh, what motivates them what is the response you want to see with them how do you tailor what how do you need to tailor your messages to achieve the kind of response that you're looking for so I, I, on the right i also put some other things you could be looking at to to take a deep dive into who your your audience really is and these questions are really important for you sometimes to understand who you are trying to reach you know um, most times the success of your work is not in the one or two successes or achievements that you record it's in things like how viable and sustainable it is after you have gone how scalable is that um, how scalable is that uh, uh, your solution or whatever you you have done uh, I mean you have achieved uh, I mean to to take you know to to spread your impact beyond your reach how scalable is it so those are some of the things to look at um, to consider as success for your um, for your 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 goal I mean either for your nonprofit we move to objectives so how will communications help you achieve your program goal what key points do you need or do you want your audience to take away what will be the first three of these? So first things first, how will you, how will communications help you? So we want to reach out to school children. Um, communications, how will communications help us? So perhaps we should be looking at, um, uh, we need to even create an awareness on this problem in the first place. Oh, there are so many out of school kids. Oh, really? What's the data? Uh, where did you get your data from? And what is the cause? What do you think is the cause and all that? Um, what key points do you want your audience to take away? So um by the time your message gets out what do you want people what do you want your audience to know that this is this is what you're trying to say um to inform this kind of action from your audience so if you consider all the points that you want to be your message to your audience what would you say is the topmost priority the first three priorities of this so that that becomes part of your objective it becomes it forms what you use to design your objectives for your communications plan so but then you need to know the difference between your communications objective and program objectives your program objectives could be to get children back to school um, out of school children give them an opportunity to be in school but the communication objectives becomes um, could be uh, say you want to be able to you want to ensure that uh, you you raise 
this amount of money, this amount of fund to enable these children get back to school, or your communications objective could be that you want to raise awareness about the situation in order to achieve your goals. Your goals could be to get the student back to school or by solving the problems that is stopping the student from getting back to school. So the goal could be to build the school classrooms, provide books and all that. So your communications objective could now be that you want to create awareness on what the problem is and how that problem can be solved what action people who hear your um your prob um I mean your 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 objectives what action do you want them to take you also need to know the difference between communications objectives and key messages you know communications objective and um your key messages are quite different but they're they're, uh, they're um, I mean you could say two sides of a coin so you have your communications objective which is to create awareness or um to uh, to show um the actions that needs to be taken the key messages are now your call to action how do you say those how do you communicate those objectives um to your audience you could use phrases you could use um um keywords you could use action words call to actions and all that to pass what your communications objective is so for instance uh, we're looking at some some of some objectives uh, do you need to educate elders legislators or business leaders about your program so maybe the problem is that people are not aware so if people are aware and uh, they understand what the issues are perhaps they will they will, they will direct efforts to that to to that issue uh, maybe it's not so much about there's no money for for these children to return to school is the fact that there's no political will or perhaps there's a lack of understanding with the gatekeepers and they are unable to they, they don't see the need for this to happen so that's what you want to demonstrate to them remember you're looking at ways to ensure that your program is sustainable your program is scalable um, something that can go beyond you and your efforts that's real success so it could also be that you need to find partners to sustain your efforts um, partnership could be one of the things you're looking at or perhaps um, you need volunteers you want so communication can act actually help you achieve a series of um, some of these objectives but they need to be defined when you're establishing your objectives make them as specific as possible um, i think what i should have done is to actually design specific objectives around the questions that i asked at the top um, that's an afterthought so these are specific these are examples of specific objectives reach ten thousand young nigerians with information about your program in 10 weeks you can see this is specific this is definite Ten thousand people who are young and are nigerians with information about your program within a definite um, time timeline could also be recruit an additional 20 families to but so these are definite goals these are as specific as possible and then it's it it means that your communications plan has a life cycle so it, it ends at a particular point um, it could end for good or it could end a cycle to start another cycle so think keywords and calls to action summarize your messages or your message to a few pertinent words. Ensure that that message is clear enough that it breaks through the clutter of noise that goes through to, to your audience through whatever channel or um, platforms or um, technology that they get their messages from. You know, so talk about strategy. We started with people, which is your audience. Um, we're looking at the post strategy. We started with people. Uh, which is your target audience and uh, we talked about how to um, how to um, narrow down to who your primary and secondary audiences are and how they impact um, the overall outcome of whatever you're trying to achieve then we also looked at the objectives which is what guides the overall direction of your communications plan and eventually um, constitutes or, or um, informs what your 
your key messages are your key messages are those messages that are one word description of what you're trying to achieve and the actions you expect your audience your target audience to take so now we're looking at strategy um what are the broad approaches you plan to adopt to reach your objectives so what are the best strategies that you can use to um ensure that children get back to school using our example of out of school children in rural areas um what strategies can you use so there are numerous strategies that you you will stumble upon i mean some as 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 wild as your dreams can take you but we have to be realistic here which of those strategies are actually realistic for for what you're trying to achieve which of those objectives are like low hanging fruits that you can easily um, take advantage of which of those strategies are, are truly fundamental to what you're trying to achieve very fundamental in the sense that they they directly and fundamentally impact what you're trying to achieve so you dive down so if you find these strategies will one strategy do or you need to use a combination of both or of one or more strategies to achieve what your communications objective are so let's look at some consideration for adopting strategies i give two examples here for instance say you want to raise awareness about uh, the example we've been looking at is out of school children um, in rural areas so you want to raise awareness about the situation you may want to choose a combination of media relations and community outreach. That's an example. It could change depending on what the objective you arrive at. You know, the objective depends on, like I said, what who your primary audience um, finally becomes based on the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, your, your primary objectives could also be informed by um, the kind of resource that you may have or so there are many things that can whatever it is that your communications objective are you you need to consider some things to um to know what kind of strategy to adopt so we say here to raise awareness you may choose a combination of media relations community outreach or is it an individual problem from your research from whatever little situation analysis that you do could just be one-on-one -on -one questions that you ask people um maybe it's just people's individual behavior beliefs that is causing um, the problem so you might in that case you might want to choose social marketing or facilitate communication versus the general you know these are some considerations so it varies greatly by um, a lot a number of factors which are peculiar to every scenario every situation so now we drive down to tactics so when we're looking at tactics you, you're thinking of the channels the media the platforms how um to how you bring these strategies to life so what are the best ways to reach your audience with your messages what tools what platforms what techniques can bring your strategies to life what media habits of your audience um, what media habits um, a peculiar with the audience that you're trying to reach. So are there other points that um, you need to take advantage of? Is, is there a social behavior peculiar to your, your, your target audience? For instance, there, there was this story about, I think somewhere in, is it Uganda or Kenya now? But I know somewhere in East Africa, um, this, this, this non-profit um, saw that um, a particular village community, the women there travel like kilometers to fetch water um, to use at home. And so straight, uh, I mean, it's a natural flowing water, so, but the distance is so much. And um, they thought the, the solution to that would be to, you know, um, get them boreholes to, to bring the water closer to them. And they actually got the funding and dog boreholes for the women. Then a few months down the line, the women were back to, you know, going back to the river to get water, even though they have a walking borehole. And so I think the team realized 
they may have missed something. We thought their problem was water. Now we're giving them water and they're still going back to the stream to fetch water. So what could be the problem? And um, further research revealed that the, the women use that time of um, going to the river to fetch water. They use that time to bond. So it's became like a cultural activity for them. So it an, became an important part of their, um, their lives because in that community, women actually are not allowed to socialize. So that's the only time they have to get together to talk about stuff. You know, that one, two hours journey to the, to the stream and back gives them enough time to bond together. And this water that has been brought into their community took that away. So they had to go back to, you know, using the river. So you can see that this is a cultural norm for these women. If you want to reach out to those kind of women, you have to keep that into consideration. So you need to ask that question, what is the best way to reach your target audience with what you're trying to, the messages that you are, you are trying to get across to them? What is the tactics that will work for you? So those are things to ask. You think about channels that are most relevant, credible, cost efficient, and popular. I mean, these keywords are really, really important because um, not taking these keywords into, into consideration or uh, not taking them important could undermine your efforts. Uh, I mean, when you're dealing with your audience, we're talking about trust. We're talking about mutually benefiting relationship. We're talking about um, 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 sustainability, uh, about uh, of that initiative or something. You want to ensure that whatever change you're trying to um, you're trying to bring to life, that change still exists even long after you're gone. So that's that's true change. That's that's like that's real impact. So you need to think relevance credibility, cost efficiency, popularity with your target audience. How, and then one last question is, how will you evaluate the effectiveness of all these channels? Those are considerations you must have. So as you implement, continually evaluate the effectiveness of your tactics and make any appropriate revisions. Schedule regular reviews. So that's the cycle where you get to your tactics, you implement. When you implement, you evaluate. As the last slide says, you evaluate the effectiveness of this channel. Whatever you find out from what you your evaluation is, you incorporate it back into, into your objective. I mean, to know what you want to achieve. So um, also consider how you will measure the effectiveness of your communications efforts. Go beyond the vein metrics. For instance, let's take an, uh, an event, for example. It's not just the number of people that attend your event. You want to check how relevant what you, what this training we're having today right now, um, this discussion, at the end of it, we want to be interested whether um, talking about communications planning directly impacts the people that attended the event. We want to be sure that um, the next time we're having this event, you want to attend and that the next thing we're talking about is tr truly relevant to your your work or your nonprofit or stuff you know so those are things to uh those are those are things that go beyond the vein matrix vein matrix could just be number of attendees uh who, who even knows if you're listening to what i'm saying so uh your attending is just it's just a number but that your listening goes beyond just your just that number um that what I'm saying is relevant to your business, to your nonprofit, goes beyond that number, that you want to come back, you want to hear what we have to say, or you have something to contribute, you want to take a class or something, or a training, all those go beyond the number. So focus on action. What actions do people take about your call? When you, when you issue out a call to action, can you see that call to action translating into action, I mean, um, in the life of your audience. So that is, that's what the focus should be on. What is your call to action? What results do you have for those? So if there is a call to action, you need to check the results you are getting. Does it interpret or does it mirror your call to action? Um, I think that's, that's the end of my slide. I was supposed to put <laughs> that's the end before going to um, the next, um, the next slide. 
Um, I think I'll take a pause here before I go to my final slide to say, um, I think this slide should have come before this. So this, this is a slide we're on now. Um, if you have any question or you have a contribution, you could either share or you could put your hands up and we, we will give you permission to speak. So contributions, um, questions. If you don't want to talk, you can type your question. Just go to slidedo.com slash R047 and um, Okay, I think um, R047 and your question will pop up here for everybody to see. But if you want to talk, you can raise your hands and um, we'll give you a chance to say something. Okay, so I'm assuming um, um, no, no feedback from Okay, I'm seeing, um, I think Shei, okay, no, Onyocha wants to say something. I think you can unmute and speak. Everybody will hear you. Hello? Yes, Solomon. My question is, the, I went to, I just went through to the site of the uh, text to, to see what they are offering. And um, I want to point out the products that the, the um, tech suit is offering. Are they free donations or does the NGOs have to pay a little discount for such products? Okay. Okay. So one of the one of the things we are going to be um, doing before we close for the day is Mfon is going to take us through what they are offering and what is going to cost organization usually. Most of them are offered for free, um, but one or two of those products will require the organization to pay like an administrative fee. I think some is just one of administrative fee. Um, one or two other products is like periodically, but those administrative fee are very, very small, as in really negligible. So Umfan is going to take us through that. Uh, I hope he will be able to answer more um to your question so prince prince can we hear you please unmute and speak hi everyone so um i would say this this is a very um, great presentation i just want to ask first of hope the slides will be shared um to us so we can have a look after it that's fine Okay, sure. Um, once we're done, I'll just remove my, uh, I'll remove all the polls, <laughs> the poll questions, and then send the slide to us. I, I believe that works for you too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Secondly, um, I wanted to ask a question about, like, say, being in an organization that involves a lot of projects and different, <clears throat> like, say, different um, funders and all that. Because um, that can entail having different plans um, towards that. Uh, let's say you, you're, in, you're, in, you're in a team where um, they have several projects that involve, say, different funders that also require, have their own different requirements. Now, how do we find that sweet spot between merging the goal of the funders, because they all come with theirs, and the um, the objectives of the overall heading company. Thank you. So um, from my experience, what I found is, yes, um, the normal thing that is supposed to be obtainable for you is an organization has a set of goals or a particular goal or a vision or um, their mission. There's usually that set of um, collective direction for the organization what the practice is supposed to be is that your funders your partners are supposed to align with your goal and help you achieve it that's what it's supposed to be of course we've seen where 
organizations just go after the money rather than after their vision or the goal that they want to achieve and align anyone that wants to fund with them. So I'm going to base my response on the fact that you are clear as an organization of what you want to achieve. Then funders are supposed to align with what um, your goal is and support that either to further yours or to expand the scope. So that being said, usually it's not out of practice to have communications plan specific to a project. So you can have one organization with an overarching communications plan specific to that vision or mission that the organization is trying to achieve. For instance, NCDC has um, their goal of protecting the health of Nigerians. Their mission says that they want to use evidence-based, evidence-based scientific, um, scientific, uh, what's that word? To you know, to to protect the health of Nigerians. That's the overarching goal. But there are there are projects that happen within the NCDC. Um, that speak to specific aspects of the work NCDC is doing. And each of these projects all plug into that, at the end of the day, they plug into advancing that one overall goal. So you can see it's, so, it's not uncommon for you to now see a communications plan for the NCDC, a strategic communications plan for the NCDC to achieve that um, evidence-based approach to being the model national public health institute that they want to be but then the projects that exist within the ncdc now have their own communication goals i am on a project um, called the i'm um, the red sea project uh man the the meaning of red is quite a handful um let me see if i can find it um, it's really quite um, for okay. It's a World Bank project called the Regional Disease Surveillance System Enhancement Project. Now that's a project that is that is complementing what the NCDC is trying to achieve. But it has its own um, objectives. It has its own communications plan. It has its own project objectives and communications objectives. But at the end of the day, whatever the actions, whatever. Um, whatever the achievements of the project, the Registry project achieves, it speaks to the, the baseline for the NCDC, which is to become a modern national public health institute that protects the health of Nigerians and, um, and the sub-region, you know. So I don't know if that answers your question. Oh yeah, it does, yes, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, do we have any other contribution, question, experience sharing um, before we move on? Okay, so I'm going to go back to my last slide. Um, and I'm going to go back to, before I say thank you, I want to say, what do you want to learn next? So today we talked about communications planning for your nonprofit, either big nonprofit or small, but mostly small. Um, but we want to be sure that what we are discussing next, um, the next time we put this meetup together is directly relevant to what you want to learn. So please go to slido.com um, slido slash R047 and let us know what you would like to learn in the next class or in the next meetup rather. Please would encourage everyone to uh, click the link, share what you would like to learn because your contributions, your perspectives are highly appreciated. We want to actually see how we can um, create all of this targeted to you. 
like targeted to you and your organization's needs. So please look so forward to your that. responses. Yeah, I see Word. Is that Microsoft Word? Um, okay. Um, I think it will be helpful if we're a bit specific. You know, Microsoft Word is a big word. <laughs> There's so much to learn in Microsoft Word. So it could be, we could tailor learnings to achieving certain things. Maybe it could be document formatting, or it could be template creation, because I found those are some of the common things that um, small nonprofits, small to medium nonprofits, um, are looking forward to templates, templates, templates that can that can do this, the branding aspect and all that. So it will be helpful. I think you can edit what your what you have put. I think you can edit it. Yes, you can edit your responses if you already sent in something. So just uh, edit to kind of elaborate more. Yeah, we'll give some more minutes to see um, what's, what, what we have. Um, and if you see something that somebody that's, somebody has written and you want, you, you agree with the person, you can write it too, so that your, your word cloud will be the, the, the biggest, you know. Okay, so I see how to build brand. Uh, is that identity? Okay, I think there's a word limit. There's a character limit for this, and um, it's affecting what some people are writing. I think there's a twenty-five character limit. To, yeah, for for what you can write there. Okay, I see Excel. I think we have two votes for Excel. So Excel is, okay, corporate branding, branding for nonprofits, okay. Okay, so um, we'll give one more minute and then we'll proceed. So um, we see a comprehensive social media plan. We see Excel taking the lead, um, branding for nonprofits, corporate branding. So I'll take that as one. I see data analytics. I see social media analytics, brand community. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think we have a fairly good idea of what um, we what the need is. I see analytics taking the lead with Excel and um, okay. That's awesome. 
that is awesome all right uh i believe we can move to the next slide i see charts let me see okay data analytics um mazino dixon um, i hope you've used the link um i see you've written data analytics but let me see if data analytics okay data analytics is on the word cloud okay 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 mm. all right um i think we'll proceed to the end we thank you for taking part in this poll i mean it gives us uh, current social media issues it gives us an idea of what the need in the community is um so we would be looking forward to the next um translating data and data from analytics for influencing that's uh that's blessing sunny saying developing key messages uh let me add that to developing key messages okay entered um Blessing Sani also said, translating data from analytics for influencing. I think if I may offer you a phrase, Blessing, um, does data for action work for you? Data for action. So it could be- Yes, data. perfectly. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to write data for action which works for us um, all right i i really appreciate our time and thanks for the feedback so i'm going to pass this over to um umfon to let us know what uh we can get what what nonprofits can get from um, tech soup for free or for almost free so i thank you so much for staying through the presentation I think in a few more minutes we'll be done. Okay. Thank you so much, Jerry. Like, wow, you killed it. <laughs> so yeah, um, let me get my slides up. A minute, please. So, so yes. Okay, can we all see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. So, um, uh, getting started with the NetSquare technology space, uh, that's what I'll just want to um, go on with. Uh, earlier we had Eli, our community manager who um, did an introduction to NetSquared and the um, TechSoup. So um, I'm just going to make this a quick run through and I expect that there will be questions and all of that. So um, TechSoup offers so, some really amazing, let me just go back a slide, some slide back. So maybe this is a quick technology overview, a quick overview of the technology market space. So this before, this is how, um, can everyone see what I have on the screen? Jumbled up lines? Yep, we can see. It. Okay, so um, initially this is how um, getting access to software works. Probably you need a software, you have to go through a library to get to Microsoft and all of that. Right now uh, with TechSoup, this is what we have. So all you just have to be is part of the TechSoup community and TechSoup gives you access to some certain softwares, many for free, and some at a discounted price. Uh, 
many for free and some you just have to pay um, like the administrative fee and all that, which is a whole lot uh, more affordable than what you would get if you were to get it by yourself. So um, it's simple. Just go to textup.global. And for Nigeria, it's nigeria.textup.global. So if you are a nonprofit, if you're a church, if you're a library, you can register at textup.global. The registration is free. Is free. You just have to submit the qualification documentations. Um, the documents that will be required, probably like your um, documents of uh, your CAC documents and all of that for Nigeria, you need your CAC documents, the documents you used when um, creating your company and um, eligibility. Each donor partner has their own eligibility criteria for Google. Google has their own eligibility criteria. Um, for Google, I can say for Google because I have actually done Google very well, Google and Microsoft, you just have to initially be part of the text to once TechSoup verifies you as a nonprofit or an, um, as an organization under the nonprofit uh, classification, Google um, easily uh, gives you the Google for nonprofit platform, which is a whole lot. Like, I'll show you some of the things. I'll show you an example of an organization which I have registered. I'm the director of ICT for that organization. And I would um, show you also the softwares and services we have access to either at a discounted rate or absolutely for free. So eligibility, each donor partner has their own eligibility criteria, your organization type budget and mission. So part of the questions they'll ask is your organization type, the budget, your mission, and uh, that also um, determines your eligibility, the registration, qualification, and all of that. So it takes between seven to 10 business days. For me, it takes, it took less than a week. So the thing is that eligibility can change over time. Like during the um, pandemic period, it was quite hard trying to register organizations because a lot of people were now becoming more aware of um, trying to get services online. So um, verification took a whole while longer than in standard seven to 10 days. So this is what um, TechSoup offers. It, it helps organizations to actually save as high as over $17,000 like plus. So it's kind of like you save $17,000 plus worth of software and hardware for free. In some cases, like in some countries like the US, Canada, and some part of the Caribbean, you can get even down to hardware for free. And also it's majorly, tech, um, TechSoup and NetSquared is majorly, I'm sorry, TechSoup and NetSquared is majorly tech for good. That's what uh, we are trying to, um, we are TechSoup are trying to achieve. Um, so you can get free nonprofit tech resources at TechSoup.org. If you go to TechSoup.org, you see webinars, blog, how-to articles, how to, do some write-ups, how to focus on your organization branding, some of the topics that we um, that we are that you um, put out to discuss. So some of these things are expert developed. You can also get expert developed courses. There are also courseware there where you can take um, some trainings at virtually free or discounted. Uh, expert developed courses designed to deepen and expand um, tech skills. So there are also tailored newsletters, newsletters for your organizations, for non, for libraries, for nonprofits, and also um, you get to network. So and like this event is also part of the networking that we are trying to build. You get to attend a free tech for good events groups in over 120 countries. You can learn tech skills uh, if you like. Um, Eli shared our profiles earlier. You can actually meet um, either me or Jeremiah afterwards. You can link up with us on LinkedIn. Um, you can connect with our community. So um, uh, like Eli had said earlier, we're trying to move from the meetup and we are going to uh, TechSoup events. So events at techsoup.org, you can check that out later. 
So also we are trying to build a trusted for TechSoup Abuja here. We are trying, and in Nigeria as a whole, we are trying to see how we can build a group of trusted, um, a network of trusted um, NGOs uh, and organizations that can actually benefit from what TechSoup uh, tends to offer. So if you're looking for, if you're not in Abuja or you travel to another state or something, for you to find the nearest um, next squared, uh, Next squared um, group close to you, you can go to nestsquared.org. There is um, there's a repository that shows the list of all the groups and probably the contact people there also. So if you need tech help, you can go to forum.techsoup.org and you get like detailed questions about um, databases, software, digital engagement, design and web building, plus everything else, all from a non-profit perspective. So at this point, um, we would like to encourage you to uh, always come around because this this is kind of this at this point of community update. What we're trying to do at this point is what we call a needs parade. So a needs parade, you what 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 we mainly require from you at this point is um, you can share with us what you want. Uh, what you want, sorry, I'm about to share my screen for, uh, you can share with us probably if you're an NGO or uh, an organization within the nonprofit range, you can you can share with us if you need um, technical help, if you need someone um, uh, with an IT skill, if you need volunteers, uh, if you need um, people to come in as interns, so that's where the needs parade is. And I was supposed to share this earlier, although we had um, Eli, our community organizer, uh, do the intro earlier, but um, probably starting from next meetup, we would like to let you guys know that the needs parade actually allows you to share um, share with us probably openings that are probably you have in your organization where you need people since we are also a trusted community so if you need people to fill in some openings people who are skilled in that aspect you can actually come here during the period of the needs parade you let us know and you'll be given a minute to actually share with us what you need and the requirements you actually need from such uh, people so Okay, so if you can see my screen, this is the TechSoup Nigeria. And this is, I'm already logged in in my profile. So this is my account. I am the director of ICT for A for Rural Education Access Initiative. And I registered my organization um, on the TechSoup, which actually gave us um, easy, easy validation and verification for Google for nonprofit. So uh, the verification process is not um, this thing. So I know, okay, yeah, this can actually be shared, most of this information. So what they just ask you is the name, the full name, the address, your phone number, the admin email, the website, if you have any, your mission statement, then um, you can put more organization details like the budgets that you kind of had, your legal identifier, your tax identification number. So for everything, it always has a valid, um, uh, validation date. Uh, so the last qualification date was um, this thing. TechSoup actually allows you to um, new your uh, qualification for all of this every three to four years. For us, we started on the 11th of last year and the next qualification is, um, the, our current qualification is, is aspiring on the, in 2024. So by 2024, we just have to renew our qualification again, which is not really uh, much of a big deal. You just need to, it's just some light processes and it's always best you kind of like start working towards renewing. So what they just need is your documents. These documents um, contain like your CAC and your directors, the, your list of directors and all of that. So this is the main part that I wanted you guys to see. The, 
what you're qualified for. For so as our organization now, we are qualified for the Amazon Web Services. We are qualified for this. Um, Autodex, Bit Defender, this is an antivirus. Box.org. Um, for Box.org, is a one-time payment, and you have um, a huge space of drive. I can't really remember the um, space. For Microsoft, you have discounted. For you have discounted um, packages. After this, you're going to go into the catalog to show you most of all the things that they offer for organizations in Nigeria. So there's also Microsoft Cloud, which uh, involves the Office 365 and all of that. There's Microsoft Discount Row. There's Asana. Asana that we know the project management and collaboration is Adobe Unlimited. There are some tech sub services that you're qualified for, like um, advisory on um, certain things pertaining your uh, like technical things pertaining your NGO and all of that. Um, DocuSign, you have DocuSign donated. You donated if given to your organization and then they discounted Then there's Tableau and Veritas. So those are some of the things that for us as an organization we're, we're eligible for. So let's go to the catalog. Let's let me show you some of the things we have um, in the catalog. Um, if we find, we find this is uh, 830, what I want to suggest is I think this deserves a whole session on its own. Because exactly what what go back to the previous um, slide or the previous page. Let me show you something. You see some of these things that organizations are eligible for. A lot of organizations don't know what these things can do for them. I have been using a lot of this for my work, both at a personal and organizational level, and I know what they can do for me. Amazon Web Service. Amazon Web Service is there on its own. Um, Tableau is there, Veritas, the, the DocuSign. So I want to suggest that um, we should consider this for one of the coming session, maybe the next session, um, to look into detail what uh, benefits organizations can get from TechSoup directly. Um, okay. If others agree, they can show by, they can show that by a show of their hands raise their hands and all that you can so, just you can just put a thumbs up okay i see many hands going up already so that's good i think we okay. should target this for um the next class it should do a deep dive into exactly how what organizations are getting what those things are and how can they actually get on board so if that works okay. for you, I, did, I didn't want us to go past um, 8 30 i was even targeting 8 15 so that it's a really yeah me too i wasn't really <laughs> paying attention to time because it kind of filled my whole screen i was trying to speak so fast and rush up everything yeah it's okay. all right thank you for for that that you've shared so in closing we'll just like you to rate us quickly and um and we'll be done for the day but it's really been an exciting um session so far thank you for um for finding the time to join us also i think we now have a bit of insight into what uh we would like to learn and at the same time umfon mentioned something very important which is the needs mapping which we can use to spread uh, more opportunities i mean if there are other ways you feel that this community can bring value to you as an individual or an organization please don't hesitate to reach out um for that so please can you just visit sli.do the same link we've been using and just rate um this meeting just for our own internal um internal review towards future um sessions please let's take a few minutes to visit sli.do slash r047 Please vote for us. We're the next senators. Vote for us. 
we camp. Our score is four point seven. We'll bring water to your communities if you vote for us. <laughs> and feel free to reach us um after this uh um after this session. We are available. You can connect with us on LinkedIn. I believe um I shared our profiles earlier. Let me see if I can get yeah. that info. Okay. Okay, um, so our rating is dropping <laughs> 4.4 over, <laughs> over 5. Man, I need to read more, I need to study more so that our rating can, you know, go up. So thank you so much, everybody who's seen five votes. Um, I think we can now call it a day. Um, please, before before you go, can you guys um, kind of like in the chat box uh, tell us parts we could improve on or where uh, probably what we didn't do so well on parts we could actually improve on so it can actually shape our performance during the next. Okay. Shay, thanks for that review. So she came late, um, but she enjoyed um, the part she was here for. Thanks. So I guess this is this is it for today. Thank you very much for joining. Um, we would we would announce the next one early on so that you can have us in your calendar and um, um, we hope to add value to you as a person and as an organization. Okay, Mazino is saying that if we can meet regularly, that's the plan. We plan to meet regularly. Um, we plan to do this once a month and find one or two things to do in between uh, just to make sure that the value that uh, each of us in this community can offer goes round. You know, I'm just taking the session today, but there's a lot I can learn from you, Mazino Dixon or Sheyi or anyone else. There's, a, there's something you we can get from you. If you also feel that you have value that you can share with the community, please reach out. Let's do this together. This is supposed to be FUBU for us by us, Ubuntu, you know, um, kind of thing. It's not um a down a, an up down relationship we all we dishing things down for you know it's something that we're supposed to all share together learn from each other and um my 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 personal goal is i want to see more impactful small non-profits i mean around us mm -hmm. and um in the country okay, so um I think that's all for uh, me. We have Solomon saying, is that time to ask me a question? Uh, okay, can Solomon just ask, but I'm not sure, I can't promise that I might answer here, <laughs> but I can drop my email and we can actually continue conversation later. Or you can follow me on LinkedIn. I kind of interact there very well. Okay. Yes, I'll... you will get the slides from yeah. the presentation. Yeah, yeah. So All right. Agbo, I saw Naka Agbo's hands up. He, do you have something you want to say? Okay. Could you what is Naka? I think it could be from the show of hands that we requested. Okay. So everybody, I think this is it. This is 20, 39, once it is 20, 40, we'll drop the mic. <laughs> Okay, so thank you all for coming. It was a really big pleasure having you all here. Like, it gave us so much joy having to see everyone here, trust me. And we look forward to having you in our next uh, program. Come with someone. 
definitely bring someone. Thank you.